Getting into ketosis can be difficult, but everyone can do it. So, what's the easiest way to get into ketosis? I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. Let's cover some basics. These conditions need to be met. Your liver glycogen stores have been depleted and the liver starts converting fatty acids into ketone bodies. This takes approximately 16 hours or so. The concentration of serum blood ketone levels is above 0.5 millimoles. Optimally not higher than 3.0 millimoles. Blood sugar and circulating insulin have dropped significantly, while not causing a hypoglycemic response. You can accomplish it with either fasting for a longer period of time or by restricting your carbohydrate intake to a bare minimum for several weeks. Both of them are almost identical. Fasting induces ketosis and the ketogenic diet mimics the physiology of fasting. But there's a difference between fasting ketosis and nutritional ketosis. They're quite similar but there's still some differences. The only distinction is what physiological state your body is in. Fasting ketosis. You haven't consumed any calories for about 24 plus hours and because of that you experience higher levels of ketones. In addition you've elevated the metabolic pathway called autophagy that causes cellular repair and maintenance. Nutritional ketosis. You've established ketosis by restricting your carbohydrate intake and you've depleted your liver glycogen that way. You're still creating ketone bodies and using them for energy but because you're eating and because you're in a fed state you suppress autophagy. While getting into fasting ketosis takes about 1 to 3 days, nutritional ketosis requires 2 to 3 weeks of keto adaptation, during which you need to pay close attention to how many carbs and protein you eat and how it affects your blood sugar levels. Strict water fasting reduces circulating blood glucose and insulin levels while raising glucagon and ketones. Not only is fasting the fastest way to establishing ketosis, but it's also the easiest. The, the liver won't start producing ketones unless your liver glycogen has been depleted first. This causes a small energy crisis. <coughs> but after about three days, your brain realizes that carbs are indeed run out and, you know, it has to come up with another solution. The brain will then accept ketone bodies as energy and will derive 75% of its energy demands from ketones. Fasting has taken up this negative connotation in society and the medical community. Although it's been practiced by dozens of cultures for thousands of years. In my opinion, it should be one of the foundational cornerstones of a healthy diet, or lack thereof. There's also a huge difference between fasting, caloric restriction, and starvation. Starvation. The body doesn't have access to essential nutrients and is slowly wasting away by cannibalizing its vital organs. It's a gradual process of degradation. Caloric restriction. You're consuming fewer calories needed to maintain your current energy demands. You're gonna burn some stored fat. However, the body tries to compensate for it by decreasing metabolic rate, down-regulating reproductive hormones, thyroid functioning, and increasing gluconeogenesis, especially if you're not keto-adapted. This is basically starvation. You're still eating, but in fewer amounts, and thus you're still degradating. We must starve! Fasting. Despite not having consumed any calories, your body is still nourished. By shifting into ketosis, you'll be burning body fat for energy exclusively. Ketones are protein sparing and they give more energy to the brain. Thus, you preserve all of your vital organs and lean muscle tissue. Fasting doesn't equal starvation because once you shift into ketosis, you have access to your own body fat. With caloric restriction, this shift won't happen. You'll still remain in a fed state, but you're still malnourished and your body basically thinks it's starving. We can't eat so many food! You're actually better off by consuming no food at all instead of feeding yourself in inadequate amounts. That's why people who experience malnutrition burn off their muscle but they still have quite a lot of body fat on them. They're starving and they're not in ketosis, therefore they get skinny fat. This applies to both physical and mental aspects. I've done intermittent fasting for years and I've also done a few 3-5 to five day fasts over that time and I must say that it's not difficult at all. Hunger becomes less of an issue the longer you fast. The more your body adapts to ketones, the better you become at burning your own body fat for fuel. This prevents you from getting hungry and if you do get hungry, then you can easily stave it off by drinking some water or coffee or something. The sensation of hunger doesn't change the longer you fast either. There's a slight difference between not getting hungry in between lunch and dinner versus not eating in 24 hours. But beyond that, the feeling stays the same. It doesn't matter whether you've been fasting for 2 days or 7 days, the hunger signal, it stays the same. It doesn't get any worse. You're having a bad day? 
Did you die? Hunger also follows a circadian pattern that's linked to your habitual way of eating. You get hungry in the morning because you've taught your brain that Hey, that's the time you usually eat something. And your brain is already expecting to get some food. <coughs> and that's why you get hungry in the morning. But did you die? And that's why snacking in between meals is not a very good habit. You'd be better off by eating once and be done with it, so your body could be forced to burn its own fat. It's easier to fast. It's easier to fast to prevent hunger. It's easier to fast to lose weight. It's easier to fast to get into ketosis. But you can't fast for the rest of your life. The longest recorded fast lasted for 382 days, during which an Irish man went from 456 pounds to 180 pounds so he lost 276 pounds you can get into ketosis by fasting for three to five days already going any longer than that can actually be counterproductive whatever the case may be if you want to shift from fasting ketosis to nutritional ketosis then you need to start eating a well formulated ketogenic diet it means after your break of fast you have to continue eating low carb high fat meals Eating a ketogenic diet should be done as a long-term thing because you'll start reaping all the benefits of keto adaptation only after a few months. That's when you really start to change your body's physiology. Remember, one small bite is enough to fill the stomach of a grown man. If you're interested in starting the ketogenic diet, then get my free ebook Simple Keto. But I also have my Keto IF program and my Simple Keto video course, so check them out. Anyway, click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay adapted, stay empowered. Sometime your heart stops, start up again. Read a book.